On April 11, 1957, in the desert of Southern California, a small jet aircraft managed what many thought impossible. It took off vertically from a mobile launch platform, flew horizontally like a traditional jet, and then returned vertically to the platform at the end of its flight. Hello, this is Russell from Anything History. This amazing aircraft was the X-13 VertiJet, developed by Ryan Aviation. Its successful flight demonstrated the viability of vertical takeoff and landing in the jet age. The story behind the X-13 is really fascinating. It was the culmination of decades of research into vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The X-13 flight happened at the very height of the jet age, but at the same time as the development of surface-to-air missiles, which spelled the doom of the project. The idea of having an airplane that could vertically take off on land had been around for many years. The theory behind vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL aircraft, is that you can take off vertically without a runway, fly horizontally like a traditional aircraft, and then land vertically. For operational war planners, VTOL aircraft have the tactical advantage of locating the aircraft where needed, even if there is no runway. The story of the X-13 begins after World War II in 1947, when Ryan Aeronautical was awarded a contract by the United States Navy to develop a vertical takeoff and landing prototype. Ryan Aviation was a developer of light aircraft, primarily known for the development of the PT-22 trainer and FR-1 fireball during World War II. The X-13 was developed during the 1950s at the start of the jet age. The project aimed to demonstrate whether or not a jet aircraft could take off vertically, transition to fly horizontally, and then land vertically. It was, in fact, the jet engine that allowed the X-13 to effectively land, solving one of the problems with earlier VTOL aircraft, because without a propeller, the X-13 could take off and land from a launch platform. The Ryan Corporation conducted tests from 1947 until 1951 for the U.S. Navy. The Navy wanted to test the feasibility of submarine-based vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. In 1951, using a tethered test rig, Ryan achieved a controlled vertical takeoff and landing. Ryan's VTOL project was picked up by the U.S. Air Force in 1953 and gained the designation X-13. The Air Force wanted to take the project further, seeking a fully functional vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The Ryan X-13 was a small aircraft, only 23 feet long. This allowed the X-13 to fit on a mobile trailer that also served as its launch platform. It had a single cockpit and a Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engine. It also had small wingtip maneuvering thrusters to precisely control the aircraft during hovering. Eventually, two prototypes were made. The first made its debut flight on December 10, 1955. In November of 1956, the X-13 was fitted with temporary landing gear, and test pilot Pete Girard took the prototype to an elevation of 6,000 feet. Girard hovered in place, pitched the aircraft forward to fly horizontally, and then returned to the airfield to land vertically. He had just completed the first horizontal to vertical and back to horizontal flight transition. On April 11, 1957, at Edwards Air Force Base, the X-13 took off from its mobile launch platform, angled horizontally, flew as a traditional jet for several minutes, and then returned to its launch trailer to complete its landing. This first flight proved that the trailer launch platform and recovery concept was indeed viable. Despite its successes, funding for the program ended in September 1957. Having spent some $9.4 million on the program, the Air Force moved on to other projects like the X-15. Although the X-13 VertiJet demonstrated the viability of vertical takeoff and landing, technological advances outpaced the aircraft. And with many technologies that were the genesis of World War II, the X-13 was made obsolete. At this time, the U.S. military shifted its attention to advancing missile and rocket technologies, However, the quest for vertical takeoff and landing aircraft did not end. More modern aircraft like the Harrier and the F-35 had adopted the ideas initially developed by the X-13. 
The good news is, the prototypes have been preserved and are on display. One is owned by the National Air and Space Museum, but is on loan to a San Diego museum. The other is at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Thank you for watching. If you want to watch another video from our new playlist, From Blueprint to Battlefield, check out this video. And for another great story from the early days of aviation, this video about Carl Spots and the 1929 question mark flight is great. They test the limits of endurance by spending six days in the air.